welcome to worship at Countryside Community Church. As we look forward to what 2021 will bring to our church, we begin a new worship series today that we pray will bring a breather and a sense of assurance to us all. Life is a series of exclamations from oh no, to help, to oh yeah. We can swing between disappointment, helplessness, and gratitude on a daily basis. The book of Psalms knows all about this. Written over a span of time from exile and isolation to the rebuilding of the community, the poetry of the Psalms will accompany us in this series, reminding us that through it all, we can trust that God is indeed holding our lives. Let us welcome God into our lives this morning by gathering the communion elements of bread or of crackers, juice or wine, or whatever you may have in the kitchen to have ready as we share of Lord's Supper together later in the service. Join us now in taking a deep breath in and letting it out and letting go of anything that might stand in the way of our worship together this morning and listening to God's voice among us. Let us begin. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. Precious Lord, and lead me home. My way grows dear, precious Lord, linger near when my life is on. Friends, so good to be together today. Now, in a little bit, we'll hear our good friend Ian talk about how we figure out what's precious to us. So let's start at the beginning and figure out what precious means. Now, I looked it up for us, and here's what I found. To describe something as precious is to say that it is of great value that it's not to be wasted or treated carelessly. We can also use the word precious to describe a being that we love so much, a beloved being. These definitions are gonna come in handy when we hear our scripture in just a couple of minutes. But before we get to that, I'd like to tell you a story. 
Now, this short story is based on a much larger story that was written by Lauren Isley, who, fun fact for today, was born just a stone's throw from here in Lincoln. The story goes like this. An elder was walking on the beach when they saw in the distance a young one picking something up and throwing it back into the ocean. Young one, the elder called as they approached the young one. What are you doing? The young one answered, throwing starfish back into the ocean. The tide is going out, you see, and if I don't throw them back, they'll die here on the beach. Young one, the elder replied, do you know that there are miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You won't make much of a difference. At this, the young one bent down, picked up another starfish, and threw it with all their might back into the sea, saying, I've made a difference to that one. As with many of our stories, we can read or hear this one a number of different ways. Maybe we hear the importance of small acts or of trying to make a difference. It seems to me that no matter what we hear as the moral of the story, it's clear that this young one, tossing the starfish back into the ocean, had decided that these starfish were precious, that they were not to be wasted. The young one of our story saw the value of each starfish and could not help but respond. So let's pray. God of many names, teach us to see that which is truly precious and to help us respond. Amen. See you next week. We do not live in a land ruled by kings as the hearers of our first psalm of this series did. Nevertheless, the petitions of the psalmist for justice, deliverance, defense of the poor and oppressed, and peace for all peoples is an undergirding theme of our faith. We are reminded that a just society is one that proclaims these lives are precious and worthy of protection. God indeed is holding our lives. Let this be our epiphany in this new year. Psalm 72, 12 through 19. God delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. God has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, God redeems their life and precious is their blood in God's sight. Long may God live. May gold of Sheba be given to God. May prayer be made for God continually and blessings invoked for God all day long. May there be abundance of grain in the land and may it wave on the tops of the mountains. May its fruit be like Lebanon and may people blossom in the cities like the grass of the field. May God's name endure forever. God's fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in God. May they proclaim God happy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's glorious name forever. May God's glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. Throughout this worship series, and as Countryside moves through this time of transition, we will continue to hear from a variety of outside voices as they help bring the Psalms to life. Today, we welcome Reverend Ian Lynch, pastor of Old South United Church of Christ in Kirkland, Ohio. Good morning, Omaha. My name is Ian Lynch. I'm pastor of Old South United Church of Christ in Kirkland, Ohio. But Omaha has a special place in my heart. You are precious to me. I spent 10 days in Omaha eight years ago. But it wasn't just those 10 days in which Omaha became three-dimensional to me and the people whom I had met previously in two dimensions became 3D friends. I had a relationship with Countryside Community Church going back to the Darkwood Brew days. And my experience was 2D. 
with folks who were operating the cameras, who were producing the shows, who were sharing in the chat. And eventually, a good number of them became three-dimensional friends as well and are now two-dimensional again. But all of that is precious. It doesn't matter if we can be together in three dimensions because we have relationship, which is real. During this pandemic, a lot of our three-dimensional experience has been reduced to two dimensions. But our relationships don't disappear because we can't be with one another physically. Each of those relationships is very real, regardless of whether it's 3D or 2D. And that which is precious is not just that which is tangible, which is physical, which we can hold in our hands like a precious metal or that ring in the Tolkien stories that was my precious. We would be wrong to limit our understanding to just things being precious. Truly, the best things in life are not things. When I was a student minister, I had the opportunity to visit with a woman in the hospital who happened to be blind. She also was failing physically and needed really to move to a nursing home and not return to her home because she wasn't capable of living on her own. And she talked to me about how much she wanted to return to her home because of all of the things there. She described items in her home, and it occurred to me she had not seen those items. Her experience of them was primarily her relationship to them. And so I tried to assure her that regardless of where she went, she would always have that mental picture, that memory that those items would remain precious to her, that her attachment to them was the relationship that mattered. And she could be physically separated and remove that attachment and still have that sense of what is valuable and precious to her. Some people really struggle with that, don't they? Perhaps you do. Holding on to items because of their sentimental value or Perhaps like some people, there are hoarders who, who make such an attachment to an item that they just can't release it at all. You know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. We can't judge what attachments people have to items, but we can say that that attachment can be problematic. It can be placing value on something that is less valuable than it ought to be considered. So what is precious? What is it that you treasure? Perhaps it is family. Surely it's at least family, relationships with other people. But is it just your blood kin? Who makes up family? Family is something we create. We speak of ourselves as children of God and therefore siblings in Christ. We are one family. Hospitals are aware of the changing dynamics of family structures these days. And it's become common in the hospital, instead of asking if your family, to ask, is this patient precious to you? Is this patient precious to you? Who is precious to you? Can you expand that sense of value beyond those who are close to you, perhaps beyond people? Our Creator, our God, sees all life as precious. It reminds me of that story of the man walking down the beach, saving the starfish, stranded at low tide, taking one and throwing it in the water, knowing full well that he cannot save them all, but that he can save at least the one and the next 
and the next until his time and effort is exhausted. And it's not that he finds only a few precious and saves only a few because they are precious. All of the starfish on that beach were precious to that man. That's what drove him. That's what compelled him. That is godlike. Because our God finds all life, your life, and my life, and the life of the person whom you don't even like, perhaps even despise. Yes, that person's life is precious. The psalm that we read today speaks of a king who is just and wise and sings his praises. Not because he won great battles, not because he brought wealth to the nation. Why? Because he found the life of the poor to be precious. Friends, that's what justice looks like. That's what God's justice looks like. That's what salvation looks like. That's what heaven looks like. The least among us are the most precious. That when they are cared for, all are cared for. That all life is valuable in the eyes of this righteous king. And heaven knows we could use more rulers like that today, couldn't we? We would write songs about them. We would lift them up and celebrate them if they knew the value of every single life in their care. Where will we find leaders like that? Well, perhaps in the mirror. Take a look. Because if you believe that life is precious, your life is precious. You are held in God's hands then you can be like the man walking that beach, seeing the precious life all around you and doing what is just, bringing salvation by caring for the one who is in front of you. Can you save them all? Can you save the world? Well, no, not alone. But you and I together, knowing that we are held by our God, that our lives are precious means that we are somebody. And that's all it takes. You know, they say you're nobody till somebody loves you. Well, I've got news for you. Somebody does. And that somebody is the creator of all that is. That somebody who loves you, loves you beyond your wildest imagination. And therefore, you have the power to change the world because you are somebody, because you have been loved. And friends, our scriptures assure us, and I stake my life on it, that God is love. And if God is love, then love is God. So let us not worry ourselves about defining all the parameters of this God, because there are no parameters. God is beyond all that we can imagine. But God is love. And love is the most powerful force in all of creation. And so, my friends, all you need to believe is that your life is held by God. And in doing so, you know that you are precious that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. And because you have known love, you have known God. For God is love, therefore love is God. Love thus is the most powerful force in all of creation. And it is at your disposal. You are loved. And the love that you show will bring justice, will bring salvation, will bring God into this world. What greater gift could we know than to experience heaven here and now? Simply change your whole way of thinking to the simple understanding that your life is held, your precious life is held in God's hands.
Amen. In Christian tradition, we have two sacraments, baptism and communion. Both are holy practices of everyday tasks. Martin Luther reminded us to think of our baptism every time we wash our face. And every time we come to a table, every time we partake in any food and drink, we have the opportunity to celebrate communion, our common union. God is not limited by time or space. And so we might celebrate this sacrament together today with whatever it is you have before you. Take whatever food and drink you have before you and hold it and understand that God is present. That these elements are blessed because of some special ability of one person to make them holy, but because you intentionally see them as holy, as speaking to you of God's presence with you. So take whatever you have, blessed as it is, and remember. Remember with me the story that we remember when we break bread, that Jesus took this bread and having blessed it, broke it and shared it with his friends at the table that you are invited to now as a friend of Jesus. And taking the cup after the meal, also sought God's blessing upon it and shared it too with his friends, saying, this represented a new covenant of forgiveness. Friends, we are a forgiven and loved and precious people, able to share together in the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Partake now in this feast. Friends, in light of the events that transpired in our nation's capital this week, we invite you to take the time to not only recognize the profound effect witnessing this type of violence can have on ourselves and our wider community, but also to take steps to care for ourselves and others as we move forward. So let's pray. 
God, our creator, our guide, in the midst of uncertainty, we seek your peace, a peace that restores our broken and grieving hearts, that holds space for rest so that every member of our community might heal, might find comfort and relief in your presence. Help us guide one another as we navigate a landscape that invites us into division, that we might deliberately build peace by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, in spite of our fear, anger, and sadness. Recognizing that in that love, we must challenge one another, hold each other accountable, and work together to ensure that divine peace might be known. Let us hold this work of peace building in our hearts. Amen. We are grateful you chose to worship with us this morning. Join us again next Sunday as we continue our exploration of the Psalms and welcome Reverend Bridget Stevens, Executive Conference Minister of the Iowa, Nebraska and South Dakota United Church of Christ Conferences. If you have joined us online or via TV, we would love to hear from you. Please visit our website and follow the links at the top of the page. First time visitor, select free visitor gift. Considering making a gift to Countryside, select donate. Or interested in joining a book study or getting our weekly email, select contact us. Our worship has concluded. Now our service begins. May the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go beneath you to uphold and uplift you, go behind you to push you in those places you would not necessarily go yourself, go beside you to be your constant and strong companion and dwell inside of you to remind you that you are not alone on this journey and you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you and within you now and always, amen.